Welcome to this module of hazard identification and uh, HAZOP study. In the previous uh, modules, uh, we have studied about uh, the hazard, the basic definition of hazard and risk, what are the basics of hazards. We had a discussion about the probabilistic risk assessment and the quantitative risk analysis and a brief about the strategies of hazard identification. So, in continuation to that particular aspect, the hazard identification methods, this may include the following aspect like preliminary hazard analysis, then we have to construct uh, the process hazard checklist on the basis of uh, uh, the different hazard analysis and identification protocol. Then we need to perform the hazard surveys, go for the hazard and operability uh, studies that is called the, the HAZOP studies and we need to perform the safety reviews. So, let us have a look about uh, uh, the first aspect that is the preliminary hazard analysis. This is uh, some sort of semi quantitative analysis uh, that is performed to identify all potential hazards and accidental events uh, that may lead to an accident. So, you need to identify uh, go all those things. Then basis of your uh, on the basis of your identification you need to rank the identify the accidental events according to their severity and then identify the required hazard control and follow up actions. So, sometimes uh, they are used to, uh, to evaluate the hazard early in the life of a process and generally applied during the conceptual design or R&D phase of a process plan. So, that once you go for uh, the implementation, then you must know that what kind of the probable hazard may present at the workplace. They are commonly used as a design review tool before a process P and I develop. So, the piping and instrumentation diagram is a schematic illustration of functional relationship of a piping, instrumentation and our system equipment components. So, the benefit of this preliminary hazard analysis they are enlisted as below. The final product your basic motto is that your final product must be safe. So, PHA help in that as particular aspect. PHA helps designer to identify and deal with the various kind of the hazard. This um, benefits the modification that are made in the earlier design stages. They are less costly and easier to implement than the modification that are made in the later design stage. So, this helps the designer to anticipate the hazards thereby reducing the number of surprises that occur during the design process. Let us have a look about the scope of this process preliminary hazard analysis. This shall consider the different factors like hazardous plant equipment and materials like fuel, highly reactive chemical, toxic substances, explosives, high pressure system etcetera. Then the safety related interfaces between the plant equipment and material. Again, uh, the examples are fire explosion initiation, propagation and control shutdown systems. Then the safety related equipments uh, that is uh, mitigating the system like fire suppression, protective equipments, etcetera. The environmental factors like earthquake, vibration, flooding, extreme temperatures, electrostatic discharge and humidity, operating test and maintenance, built in test, diagnostic and emergency prote protocols etcetera. Then the facilities support like storage, testing equipment, utilities etcetera. Now, there are various steps involved in this uh, preliminary hazard analysis. One is, uh, so we are going to in detail that what is the PHA prerequisites. You must uh, have a, a proper hazard identification list with you you must have a frequency and a consequences estimation, then you must have a risk ranking and a follow up action. So, by this way you can go for this to do list. So, let us have a look about the prerequisites. Now, first thing is that you need to develop the preliminary hazard analysis team. 
Now, this team may include those who are very much aware about uh, uh, the process, those who are very much about uh, uh, the safety reviews of that particular process, etc. Then define and describe the system to be analyzed, like what are the system boundaries, you may go give the system description, layout, drawing, process flow diagram, block diagram, flow sheets, etc. Use and uh, storage of energy and hazardous uh, material in the system, you must have a proper MSDS, etc. The operational and environmental conditions uh, to be considered, it is uh, well documented. System for detection and control of hazards and accidental event, emergency system and a mitigation actions. Now, collect all risk information from the previous and similar system. So, you may get all those information from the accidental database. Now, let us have an example of a fired heater. This gives you a good um, a clue about uh, this PHA. There are various subsystems and items like operating mode, sometimes fire heater normal operation, hazardous element may present like that is called the fuel supply. The triggered event which is which causes the hazardous condition that may be no flame on the burners or a, or a fuel valve open. Sometimes hazardous conditions like fuel enters into the heater and accumulates. So, triggered events they are also enlisted like potential accident, sometimes it may lead to the, the explosion or fire. Now, measures to prevent that is the provision of a flame uh, failure detectors and alarm and trip system must be used. So, these, this gives you a brief outline uh, about uh, this, these fire heaters. Now, next step is uh, that the process hazard checklist. Now, this is an attempt to compensate for the potential limit of hazard recognition, human memory and attention to specific details. This helps to ensure the consistency and um, completeness in carrying out a task from an individual within a work group or across uh, an institution. Now, there are two basic type of checklists, one is that process based, another one is the behavior based. Now, uh, let us have a look about the process based checklist. This addresses the safety hazard associated with a specific well defined work task. Now, usually they establish a set of steps for the checklist user to implement. Now, to be successful checklist developer, one must be able to identify the critical workflow for which the hazard assessment is based and you must have a relevant safety protocols. Then established and explicitly the integrate all those protocols into the checklist. The second is the behavior based, they are designed to ass assess new and undefined task or scenarios. The cause and effect this concept uh, identifies the potential hi high hazard, high risk work practice. Uh, to be successful checklist developer or engineer must have a knowledge of the spectrum of hazard and activities conducted in the category of work area. An appropriate set of hazard assessment criteria they are established for evaluation in the checklist. Now, sometimes uh, we may need to have a combined process and behavior based system. Now, checklist those do not have uh, to be strictly process based or a behavior based. Sometimes a process based checklist may incorporate behavior based checklist or vice versa. That depends on the need of the system. So, often behavior based checklist may be conducted for a higher uh, level risk assessment. Now, if activities are then identified as a higher risk, a process based checklist can be developed to mitigate those kind of risk present at the workplace. Now, uh, we may have certain things uh, in our mind that list of the pro uh, possible problem and reason to be examined that is extremely important by this way you can identify those zones which are problematic. Now, questions are usually answered in terms of yes or no, whether the hazard is present, yes or no. Now, reminds the reviewer or operator of the potential problem area, this is again um, uh, the good practice 
and sometimes you may adopt a loop that whether this particular system operates, yes, okay, then go ahead and then again you may ask the, the reviewer that whether this particular thing is uh, um, um, good or not, reassure the things. Now use during the design of a process to identify the design hazard or can be used before process operation. There are several examples of uh, uh, process hazard checklist. Uh, one example is that an automobile checklist that one might review before driving away on a vacation. The checklist might contain the following item. Check oil in engine, yes or no. Now, if it is no, then go ahead. Then again relook that whether the oil in the engine is uh, at the proper level or not. Check air pressure in the tire, yes or no. Check fluid level in the radiator. If it is not, the, if it is not, then try to go for replenishment. Then check fluid level in the windshield washer tank, yes or no. If it is uh, not up to the mark, then uh, refill it. Check headlight and tail light. If it is not working properly, then go for the correction. Check exhaust system for the leak. If it is not functioning properly, then go for repair. Check fluid level in the brake system. If it is not up to the mark, then refill it up to the desired level. Then check gasoline level in the tank. So, you have to assure yourself that uh, the petrol or fuel in the level uh, in the tank is up to, up to the mark. So, design uh, of uh, this checklist depends on the intent, what kind of intent you are having. So, based on your intent, you can design the checklist as per your requirement. Now, different for users uh, in course of initial design of the process and for a process change. So, they applied only in uh, preliminary stages uh, of hazard identification and should not be used as the replacement at later stage of hazard identification protocol. So, most effective in identifying hazard arising from process design, plant layout, storage of chemicals, electrical system and so on. Now, uh, now what are the advantages associated with the uh, process hazard checklist? Uh, some of them, some of uh, the advantages are enlisted over here. Now, they can be used as a non-system safety engineering experts. They are useful for the practiced technologies and standard designs. They capture a wide range of previous knowledge and experience and they ensure that the common or obvious problem are not overlooked because you are reaffirming that whether you have checked or not. When we are having so many advantages of these uh, process hazard checklists, there are certain disadvantages. Now, the, these disadvantages are they are limited use of unprecedented technologies or unique design. They can frame the process leading to fa uh, failing to recognize the hazard also exist in the list and a failure to explore what is not on the checklist. Sometimes you may overlook any kind of uh, things which need to be listed in checklist. According to definition, uh, they will miss hazard that have not been previously seen. So, that is again a very crucial issue. So, based on these particular things, you need to perform the hazard survey. Now, these hazard surveys, they should be guided by the, the facility safety committee in conjunction with the facility safety coordinators. So, you need to perform all those things in consultation with these two bodies. Inspections can be scheduled on a daily, weekly, monthly or yearly basis. Usually yearly basis is performed in case of safety audit. Now, daily hazard surveys are normally completed by the operator or shift leaders. Weekly hazard surveys are normally completed by the manager or supervisors. Monthly hazard surveys are normally completed by the area safety inspector or safety coordinators. And above all, the quarterly safety uh, hazard survey are typically completed by the facility safety committee. Now, these should be completed by including as many um, individual viewpoint as possible, so that 
you must have a number of n number of resources because if you are having the large number of resources the quality of those survey will be on the higher side. So, each person on the hazard survey team uh, should be familiar with the process or operation and should have acquired the insights concerning problems, fault and situation that could cause the accidents. Now, before completing the hazard survey, the inspection team should review the past near misses because this may give a proper clue, accidents, employee complaints and written policies that pertain to the area of inspection because these written policies may give a clue and sometimes these written policies may include the, uh, the local rules or the rules and regulations those who are applicable to the area in question. Now, uh, uh, as for the example of uh, this uh, site survey or hazard survey, one example which we have enlisted that is the fire safety survey. Now, this is uh, you can see uh, we have asked these things in uh, responses in terms of yes or no. Now, uh, these are the general things like home has a smoke alarm on every level. Suppose you put no, then again you need to go for the corrective measures. Home has a smoke alarm in every bedroom. The smoke alarms are located outside at uh, each separate uh, sleeping area. The smoke alarms are located at least 10 feet from a stationary or fixed cooking appliances. Sometimes you may put yes, no, yes, no. So, if yes, then you are relatively safe and if no, then you need to go for the corrective measures. Again, that uh, home has ionization smoke alarms, home has a photoelectric smoke alarms, so home has a combination of photoelectric ionization smoke alarms. So, all uh, now the crucial question is that uh, all smoke alarms are working. If they are now, uh, if you put no, then definitely you may uh, look into the previous aspect. So, it gives you an opportunity that you can relook the different responses. Now, family, family has a home fire escape plan. If it is not, then definitely you have to work upon. So, this uh, particular survey gives a proper information about uh, the problems associated in um, the particular facility. Now, uh, this, these hazard surveys are very simple process uh, as uh, uh, we have shown in the this particular slide. These are the simple questions which we need to ask. Then uh, formal systematized approach using a rating form similar to an income tax form. Now, final rating number provides a relative ranking uh, to the hazard. Now, there are two popular uh, forms of hazard survey. They are one is the Dow fire and explosion index that is F and EI. Another one is the Dow Chemical Exposure Index that is CEI. So, let us have a look of the one by one. The first one is the Dow Fire and Explosion Index F and EI that is a method developed by the Dow Chemical Company for ranking the relative fire and explosion risk associated with the process. Now, analysis the analyst calculate the various hazard and explosion indexes using the material characteristics and process data available. Now, they are designed for rating uh, the relative hazard with the storage, handling and the processing of uh, explosive and flammable materials. Now, the basic idea is to provide a purely systematic approach mostly independent of judgment factors for determining the relative magnitude of flammable hazard in a chemical plant. Now, uh, this is a multi step process and uh, uh, the first step in this uh, uh, to perform the hazard survey pertaining to the Dow fire and explosion index is the material factor, function of type of chemical used is adjusted for the general and special process hazard. Now, these uh, adjustment or penalties uh, are based on the conditions such as storage above the flash or a boiling point, endor exothermic reactions and fire heaters. Now, credits for various safety systems and procedures are used for estimating the consequences of hazard and after the fire and explosion index has been determined. So, we must one must note that higher the value of MF, the more flammable and explosive the material. 
the second step is the determination of general process hazard now penalties are applied for different factors like exothermic reactions that might self heat or endothermic ones that could react because of an external heat source such as fire etc the material handling and the transfer the enclosed process units preventing dispersion of escaped vapors the limited access for emergency equipment that is a very serious issue and poor drainage of flammable material away from the process units so uh, penalties may be imposed for if uh, the process facilities having such type of system the next step is the determination of penalties for special process hazards that is less than atmospheric pressure operation with the risk of outside air entering so that there may be chance of flammability low temperature operation with the potential embrittlement of a carbon steel vessel hot oil heat exchange system where the hot oil is above its ignition temperature and sometimes it may lead to the auto ignition uh, scenario the toxic material or flammable material which could impede uh, the fire fighting equipments corrosion and erosion of process unit structures operation in uh, or near the flammable limits uh, like ufl and fl lfl dust uh, explosion risk leakage around the joints and the packing use of fire the heater providing the ready ignition sources etc so these are the, the, these were the the things which uh, need to be addressed now next is uh, your dow chemical uh, exposure index this is again the method developed by the dow chemical company used to identify and rank the relative acute health hazard associated with the chemical releases so this uh, chemical exposure index is calculated from uh, five broad factors that is uh, a measure of toxicity the quantity of volatile material available for release the distance to each area in question the molecular weight of the material being evaluated and the process variables that can affect the conditions of release such as temperature pressure reactivity etc now this uh, simple method of rating uh, um the uh, the relative acute health hazard potential for people in neighboring plants or communities arising from the possible chemical release incidents now the use of this uh, chemical exposure index you need the following items one is that accurate plot plan of the plant and the surrounding area the simplified process flow sheet showing the containment vessels major piping you must have a proper chemical inventory data with you the physical and chemical properties of the material investigated and chemical exposure index guide and chemical exposure index form now the process for this uh, hazard survey pertaining to cei is this relatively uh, simple that this begins with the definition of possible release incidents including releases from pipes hoses pressure relief devices relieving directly to the atmosphere vessel tank overflows and spills now sometimes incidents are used with the number of simplified source models to estimate the release rate of material we have already discussed this these source models now emergency respond planning guidelines see, ERPGs that are used with the simplified dispersion model to determine the the chemical exposure index value and downwind hazard distances resulting from the release. The hazard surveys they are suitable for identifying the hazard associated with equipment design, layout, material storage, etc. They are not suitable for identifying the hazard resulting from improper operation or upset conditions. and they require little experience easy to apply and provides a quick result now next is uh, the hazard and operability studies hazop the basic definition of this hazop is that this is the structured and systematic examination of plant or existing process or operation in order to identify and evaluate problem 
that may represent risk to personal or equipment or prevent efficient operation. This is the qualitative technique based guide words carried out by a multidisciplinary team that is called the HAZOP team during the set of meeting. They are used for many years as a formal procedure uh, to identify hazard in chemical process facility. The systematic search for hazard which uh, are defined as uh, deviation within these uh, parameters that may have a dangerous uh, consequences. Now, the basic idea is to let the mind go free in a controlled fashion in order to consider all the possible ways the, that process and operational failure can occur. Now, before the studies is started, detailed information on the process must be available which includes uh, up to date process flow diagram, process and instrumentation diagram, detailed equipment specification, material of construction, mass and energy balances maybe in terms of equations. Now, in the process industry these deviation uh, concern process parameters such as uh, flow, temperature, pressure etcetera. Now, HAZOP analysis is a team approach having a team of people representing all different functions of a plant. They identify all deviation by the brainstorming among themselves to a set of guide words which are applied to all parts of the system. Now, there are a set of objectives carrying out for the HAZOP study. Uh, one is to check the design whether it is proper or improper to decide uh, whether uh, and where to build the things to decide whether to buy a piece of equipment or not to obtain a list of questions to put to a supplier to check the running instructions that may be imposed to the worker to improve the safety of any existing facilities. Now, uh, the team composition of HAZOP studies, this will have a team leader that is an expert in the HAZOP technique. Uh, there are uh, several technical members like for if you are having the, the new design, then design or a project engineer, the process engineer, uh, usually a chemical engineer, the commissioning manager, the instrument design engineer a chemist because sometimes you may have uh, go through for a, chem, uh, a chemistry reaction. Now, now, if you are performing this thing to for the existing plant, then you must have a plant superintendent, the process supervisor that is sometimes called the foreman, the maintenance engineer, the instrument engineer, the technical engineer, etcetera. Now, as far as the process is in question, this is as follows that the system is divided into suitable parts or subsystems which are then analyzed one at a time. Now, for each subsystem, each parameter like flow temperature, pressure, volume, viscosity, etcetera has an influence on it. If it is, then it should be noted. The guide words are applied to each parameter in each subsystem. The intention is to prompt creative discussion of deviation and possible consequences and for each significant deviation the possible causes and they are usually identified so that you can look into the remedial measures. Now, this process is uh, systematic and uh, it is helpful to define the terms that are used like study nodes, the location. Uh, for example, on piping and instrumentation drawing and procedure, the location at which the process parameters are investigated for deviation. Then the intention, the intention defines that how the plant is expected to operate in absence of deviation at the study nodes. Now, this can take a number of uh, forms and uh, can either be descriptive or diagrammatic like flow sheet, line, diagram, p and IDs, etcetera. Then you may look into the deviations and these are the departure from the intention which are discovered by systematically applying the guide words like more pressure, high pressure, etcetera. Then the causes, the reason why the deviation might occur, once a deviation has been shown uh, to have a, a credible cause, it can be treated as a meaningful deviation. Now, these causes can be hardware failure, human error unanticipated process uh, states, etcetera 
or sometimes external disruption like loss of power etc which is not in your control. Then consequences these are the result of deviation and should they occur like release of toxic materials etc. You may have certain guide words like simple words which are used to qualify uh, or quantify uh, the intention in order to guide and stimulate the brainstorming process and discover the deviations. So, uh, whenever uh, you perform these HESOP studies, there are few guide words like no or not and the definition is no part of the design intent uh, occurs such as no flow in the pipeline due to blockage. More or less a quantitative increase or decrease of some parameters such as uh, flow temperature etc. As well as the all the design intentions are fulfilled and something happened in addition. Part of only part of the design intention is uh, uh, fulfilled. The reverse that is the logical opposite to the design intention occurs other than something completely different than attended uh, 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 attendant occurs. Now, one example is that consider the simple process diagram in this figure. It represents a plant where a substance A and B reacts with each other to form a new substance that is called C. There is, if there is more B than A, there may be an explosion. So, this is the chances of explosion. Now, uh, let us have an analysis of this uh, HAZOP analysis, no or not that is no A. So, tank containing A is empty this one and V1 and V2, this V1 and V2 um, is closed. So, pump does not work that is pipe, uh, pipe broken. The consequence is not enough A, this may lead to the explosion. Now, the proposed measures are indicator for low level monitoring of flow. Now, more that is too much A, the pump too high capacity opening of V1 and V2 is too large. This one V1 and V2 is too large. The consequences are C contain, uh, contaminated by A, so tanks are overfilled. This is indicator of high level uh, and the monitoring of flow is needed. Less not enough A that is means V1 or V2 that the valve V1 and 2 the pipe are partially blocked and pub, pump gives off low flow. So, not enough A, this may lead to an explosion. As well as the deviation is other substances may present, sometimes V3, uh, V3 is open, the air sucked in. So, not enough A, that is the consequence and some, it may lead to the explosion. The proposed measures are flow monitoring based on Feet. Reverse liquid pump backward that is wrong connector to the motor. So, not enough A may lead to explosion and A is contaminated. So, you must go for the flow monitoring. Other than the A boils in pump, the temperature is too high that is not enough A in the um, system, then it may lead to explosion. Then temperature and flow monitors ring is essential. So, uh, uh, since it is a very uh, systematic approach, uh, let us have a look about the history of this HAZOP study. This is uh, developed by Lovely in 1974 uh, by ICI that is Imperial Chemical Industry of UK, UK based on early account of Elliott and Owen in 1968 which was developed in 1968. The technique originated uh, in the heavy organic chemical division of ICI which was then a major British and international chemical company. So, history this has been described by Trevor Cleats who was a company safety advisor from 1968 to 1982. The process of this HAZOP study is the system divided into the functional blocks. So, every part of process is examined for the possible deviation from the design function. Now, can the deviation caused any hazard or inconvenience to the system? Must analyze. Each deviation is considered to decide that how it could be caused and what the, the consequences would be. Now, every phase of the process must be well defined. 
each system and person must be well defined the question formulated around the guide word this is uh, extremely important because you are having the set guide words for this one now for the hazard and preventive remedying action they are must be they, they are well defined and they must be well defined this is the primary requirement the next aspect is to go for a review now here you are having a diagram where you are having a hazop review which was given by the team this may lead to the preparation based on the knowledge experience teams of hazop experience they may have attitude meeting leadership they give that proper documentation now these documentation documentation may lead to the various tables sometimes enlisted with the deviation various causes consequences Uh, methodology for safeguard action and you must go for the follow up that whether your recommendation and whether the study has something uh, so that it must be follow up now sometimes certain mistakes may take place that may be attributed to the the failing to establish a safe environment for the team members consequences of uh, events that not carried out to conclusion taking unwanted credit of for safeguard too little credit given for safeguard failure to make the recommendation as specific uh, as possible poor record keeping of uh, all those hazops failure to hazop a startup and shut down procedure p and ids are not up to date updated or poorly constructed now there are certain benefits associated with these hazop studies they are having the built in brainstorming systematic and comprehensive methodologies you may develop all those things they are more simple and intuitive than other commonly used risk management tools its method methodical approach ensures that deviation from design intent are detected and acted upon they are very much creative and open ended they gives the completeness identifies all kind of process hazards they are rigorous structured and yet very versatile and identifies the safety and operability issues they are helpful when confronting hazards that are difficult to quantify the methodologies does not force to explicitly rate or measure deviation probability of occurrence severity of impact or ability to detect the hazards that are difficult to detect analyze isolate count predict etc these hazards are rooted in human performance and behavior there are certain limitations attributed to these hazop studies uh, uh, they are enlisted in this particular slide now they can be a time consuming this because they have included the operability no means to assess the hazards involving interaction between the different parts of a system or a process there is no mean to assess the effectiveness of existing or proposed controls hazop utilizes a team approach and hence cannot be conducted by a single analyst so you must have a well formulated team they relies on having right people in the room no risk ranking or prioritization capabilities and uh, one more requirement is that the team should be skilled and multidisciplinary with good knowledge of plant uh, now it's intended design and operation so all thing um, all the team members should have well acquainted with the all aspect of the plant and does they does not distinguish between the low probability high consequences event or vice versa so in this particular module we have discussed about uh, the hazard identification tool we have performed the uh, we have discussed the various kind of hazop studies given one example for this one and in case if you wish to have further reading there are a lot of uh, references enlisted thank you